So let's move on to the next thing. And now we have a lot of uh, balancing and modifications that we have uh, affected in order to try and increase the game comfort and the experience that people get during their adventures. So, and the first point, Crocus, tell us, PVM balancing. Aha, finally! <laughs> it's something that we've talked about a lot, many, many times on the live. So, previous updates and we're still talking about it, balancing and equilibrium right now classes generally which is a highly intensive point because we have been told that we've we were always um doing uh, updates for pvp and then pvm suffers which is not true so the game evolves and the needs change so we have to find a balance between pvp and pvm so there are effectively problems in some places that have to do with classes but we've also found that sometimes it's the mobs that are the issue so instead of modifying classes all the time and focusing on just those we thought how about we go and change some mobs as well just because we've also are thinking about finding some coherence because some classes were naturally weaker in endgame content just because they were susceptible to some sort of effects like the zeller is completely useless the moment gravity is involved in the game. Um, unhealable state particularly affects the Sacria more than any other class. So we've thought, oh hey, uh, SS Firecastle, <laughs> welcome to the chat. Uh, so we have thought about doing some work at the other end of the spectrum and just cut the classes some uh, flack. Give them some uh, break. So there were some states that are typically more bothersome towards the class, like Zellor, as we've mentioned. Sacri is more susceptible to unhealable. So we've also looked at uh, the duration of effects and other things that are problematic to some classes over other else. So it's not the classes between each other being unbalanced, but it's what class can do what content in relation to some mobs. So some things are globally hard for all classes, or whatever. They don't correspond to the level recommend and I've said this just yesterday and the day before and the day before that and the day before that I don't understand how Fonoroshi who had the decision to type the number 140 next to that boss It's insane. It shouldn't be a level 140 boss at all. So they are re reviewing uh, the range levels for mobs to make them more adaptable and accurate as far as levels <laughs> so in this update we've made about 15 wow we've made shit loads of mod modifications about i can tell you about 15 areas that were completely changed in the update that we will all have access to in the beta tomorrow so about 15 areas some of them are more important some modifications are just slight some are really considerable i have not yet announced the areas so please hold off hold off we need to wait a bit no not tell us everything so, there are four dungeons that aren't level 200, but have been judged to be too difficult for their level. So now, I'm talking about the bosses. I'm not talking about the, the areas. So there are four and five level 200 dungeon bosses who they have been modified because they were a bit too OP and a bit too hard for all levels because they're level 200, so they're hard for everyone. <laughs> Come. <laughs> so, are we going to go back on some changes that you've made? Yes, I've got my little list. I'm ready for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Effectively. So, we have decided to take the direction of balancing a value balancing. So, things that can have an effect on all classes. So, it's the mechanics that we will touch. Alright, 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 let's carry on. So, they were talking about how they've changed some mechanics from the bosses. Rather than try and make them... Um, uh, rather than change the classes to be better at doing the dungeons, they've decided to make the dungeons slightly less irritating by being less abrasive towards specific classes. So let's have a look at what the result is. So, if it doesn't function, we will have to stop and rethink about a more complex solution. But now, uh, so over the long term, I'm just going to say this like this, we have the potential to also enhance and better the dungeon without touching the difficulty, This, which is something that people complain about. So the mechanics, if they're a bit old or not very easily understood, we will go over and look at it. But for now, we're on a very light nerve that will touch the family of monsters. So like uh, reducing the effect of something for from four to two turns. So, usually with hard dungeons, it's sometimes not just the boss himself that poses problems, it's usually the mobs around them that can cause a lot of hassle and be the difficulty. 
So instead of doing one mega balancing and just completely revamp dungeons, we decided to make little tweaks. So I'm just going to touch on the most essential points. There's a lot more than what I'm going to say, but the, this is the gist of it. Let's start with very high level dungeons. So Servitude, he can. we have a limit of two army screens that he can summon. summon. And every summon... Uh, 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 hold on. So max, so Servitude now can summon a maximum of two army screens in at once. Uh-huh. And each one. And each, each one of them can summon a maximum of four. So hello Nala, welcome to the chat. So the maximum that you will be able to face with Servitude if you completely ignore the army screens is two and four IOPS. So that's the maximum you will ever deal with in the dungeon from the next update. And that will reduce the maximum number of entities in the map, which in some cases got ridiculous as we've seen. So there's less entities to have to deal with and manage during the fight. So on Cabal, I know that it's a dungeon that has been a lot, uh, that has been uh, flagged to us as a lot, being a very, very difficult. So now we're giving you back the control of the arms, but infinitely. So once you get, until the arm dies, you keep control. I don't know what that means exactly. So the mobs, uh, I don't know what that means. It could mean one of two things. Either when you get control every turn, you can use them without standing on the tile. Or it could be that once you gain control once, you just don't need to stand on the tile, but it's still one turn you control, one turn you don't. I don't know the exact detail. This is going to have to wait, unfortunately, until tomorrow when they release at least the French change log, which will have exact details of spells, duration, new effects, and things like that. So it's a uh, 2 plus 4 maximum um, golden. So Andre, the maximum servitude can summon is 2 army screens, and each one of them can summon a maximum of 2 IOPS. So it will be 4 IOPS, 2 armies, maximum for servitude. And for Cabal, you have infinite control of the arms. I have no idea what that means in reality because he did not give any more details. But the other thing he mentioned now where I posed is, uh, do you know after turn four or five, he summons some mobs from the area who come back and just completely wreck you if you're not one turn away from finishing. They're so difficult to deal with. Big HP, big damage, lots of mobility. These will have their HP reduced. They will get nerfed a lot. Yeah, those mobs will have lower HP. So the control remains until the arm dies and the new waves of mobs that will be resuscitated will have less HP so that will aid and make it easier to clean. And also all the lags and bugs that were related to the transition from you playing as a character to controlling the arms will also be smooth. Also we have King and Queen which are complex bosses, very high level, a Wuking and Wukong area. So there is a pacifist state on the queen side that has been transformed into unhealable. Uh, no, sorry. What was he saying? So, uh, so the heal, the um, pacifist state has become gravity state now, which <coughs> stops the frustrating uh, situations. So. Gravity is uh, annoying, but not as much as pacifist. <laughs> and same thing with unhealable state. On R King Imagami, he used to unbewitch by five turns, so we've lowered that to two turns. We've also enhanced the visibility. Ah, whenever there's a uh, phase change, he used to kill um, the alter ego. Ah, we have enhanced the visibility, the visual look of that spell that kills alter egos whenever they change phase and they just explode everything in the area where they were, that will be enhanced so you'll be able to better see it. I don't know what that means. During the phase change, when king and queen come back to their initial form. This is a thing for, well, this is something that people have passed by it without noticing it too much. But it allows you to, to much better clean mob waves. There's also a spell we've added that auto kills so king and queen when you control them you can suicide them in order to kickstart the next wave immediately and also we have changed the hp the you know the mobs that emerge after you kill a mob and they go in invulnerable those will have lower hp and we've also nerfed some of their passives 
So things like a high damage or range of some spell things will be they will remain difficult but they will be less difficult as they are now. And I'll go back very quickly on low level mobs. Oh yes, you're absolutely right, Eslix. That spell they've mentioned it, yeah. So uh Will it count for special, I wonder? I have absolutely no way to answer that. Doesn't insta-kill the summon mean the special is easy? Only if you can manage to get them all in the right positions crafty. So that when the king or queen come back, they explode everyone. But if they're roaming around the map, tough luck. Indeed, they always end the turn with AP left anyway. Because as long as not killed by enemies, just play the turn and sacrifice. Yeah, so less damage, Jokaro. Right. Ah, this is a cool one. Let's go back on some low lower level mobs. So Kumio, for example, is a low level uh, dungeon, but you have to use a spell called the Spirit Lantern in order to make it invulnerable and it just goes invisible and whatever, whatever. That thing used to count as one summon. So people had to do some theory crafting. They needed to have at least, if you play a summoner class, means you had to add one extra summon to account for that spell. Now it is like a common spell that you just cast. It doesn't count towards your one summon. So it makes it easier to do that dungeon without having to go through the extra hardship of doing theory crafting to account for that thing as a summon, which it no longer is now. Globally, Damages have been slightly reduce, reduced, the maluses have also been slightly reduced on durations from 5 to 3 or things like that. There are also some modifications. This is a bit harder to summarize. In any case, everything will be listed in the change log. But normally you'll get all the details and also tomorrow, during the beta launch, you will have access to pretty much every change that we're talking now all the bosses that you can see here so you can test them but you have also to keep in mind that the dungeon that are less than level 200 we've balanced them to be accessible for their level so if you go 200 to try a cameo just keep that in mind that it will be far too easy anyway with or without these changes so these changes with it or everybody wants to know eternal conflict what have you done with it <laughs> so there are loads of modifications but in effect we will keep one element that is random. The passive of each monster at the beginning of a fight. So one bonus and one malice. So you can get regen of HP, but they do more damage. So there will be just this element that will be uh, random at the beginning of a fight. <clears throat> but there will be only one modifier through the entire area and dungeon now. So there won't be a special one for the boss fight and other for the area. For the whole nightmare area will be unified. So now this will combine, oh, there's a little bit, uh, ah, okay, 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 so this is what I was curious about earlier. So there's a little, so the modifier will affect the entire area and the boss itself. So there will be no more discrepancy between area outside and inside the dungeon. You will see the detail later. We've also changed the interaction be with the nightmare Dofus with that Ah, oh, because we used to have two modifiers, and when you equip the Nightmare Dofus, it affected the first one, completely made it void, nullified, and then the second line you had to deal with. But now that there's only one line, how do they solve for the utility of Nightmare Dofus in that dungeon? Let's go! <laughs> oh! So, we've modified the interaction of the Nightmare Dofus with the modifier because there's only one, which will make it. I'm, I will leave the surprise up so you can find out for yourself later. But it will surprise you and it should be something that makes the fight slightly more interesting slash easier. So there were also some effects that have been reduced like malices um, and lesser damage because uh, that has posed problems for not just you, pretty much everyone who has tried the dungeon. And some more small ones that we're not going to tell you about so you can discover for yourself. I've not put everything here for you, but they have been. Does anyone know what Kosholu is uh, as a dungeon? Oh, is it a Moorwolf mob? Ah, It sounds like Cthulhu, but it's not. <laughs> the Fat Wolf from Moorwolf, right, so that has been changed. So on top of everything that you can see here in front of you in this presentation, Eternal Conflict, King and Queen and all these big bosses that we are seeing, there's also some other ones we have not yet mentioned that we will be talking about now.
like uh, that fat boss that we've talked about in the Moorwolf dungeon, and also Tengu that has, has seen a little modification for our friends, the dreamers, people the dreams, just to help them a little bit. So, the summons that you need, the yokai and the yomi that you need in exactitude before you can vol name, we've reduced, we've given you assurances now that when you start the fight, you know for a fact that you will get the right mobs very, very quickly. So it will simplify the fight for you. Also, there was a modification on the Tanyu keys, so the entire mob area, whether it's the boss or mobs in the area, hitting them now, we will see an extra mechanic that will show... Right, so, uh, Tanyu Kui-san and mobs in the area, uh, no, it wasn't free, uh, Sevi, it wasn't free at all. Whenever I started a fight with Tengu, it had to be the only option I had, and I freed up the next hour and a half. <laughs> it could be a 20 minute fight and then I'm happy, or it could be a 45 hour, hour and a half long fight. Just because the RNG and the number of mobs that were in the area that he could summon meant that you couldn't get it. You can't just skip your turn fast, you need to shield. He puts erosion on your tank and all of a sudden it's just annoying as hell. Anyway, so the Tanukuisan family, so Terdala, so Pandala, the earth side, so bottom right. All of these mobs had one annoying uh, mechanic that they all shared, which is the glyphs underneath them make them invulnerable. Whichever mob on that area just stood on the glyph made it invulnerable. So what happens is if you have a class that can push, pull, uh, transpose like a Sakri or a Zeller, you had a good time, everything was fine. But if you're a Saadi and you only have release and one summon that can push, then that area was complete rubbish for you. So what they've done is they've added a little something on top of the mob, so a little mechanic, like a passive. If you hit them, then at random, I don't know exactly how this will work, but you will either get pulled, pushed, or something will happen that has to do with movement to make the fight easier for everyone. So classes that have mobility and transposition and things like that will not have to rely on their skills and Sadis as well and the ones who don't have will have an easier time of it. So it allows you to do D-locks, so to move them from their glyphs without having to have a lot of mobility and I'm thinking of examples like the Sadi as a class in particular. Yes, Liak, I will post the video as well. I will post the summary video on YouTube and plaster it all over the Discord so you can find it there much easier. Th right, shall we do a quick summary for Flammable and Furex? Right, I'll give you the quick summary. So, this guy right here, top left, uh, they've added a push-pull movement mechanic, which means the D-lock are super easy now, regardless of what class you use. Just interacting with the mobs means that they get pushed-pulled and that puts them off their glyphs. We don't know more details about everything. We will know more tomorrow when they release the change log. Uh, they didn't mention Funoroshi yet. Uh, they've mentioned Kumio. Kumio, you had to use Lantern Spirit, which is a spell that you acquire in order to delock the boss. But the problem that they found with it is it occupies the slot of a summon. So if you have one summon in your set, and you s cast that spell, you can't cast anything else. No Schaefer, no nothing, that's it. So what they've changed it into is a normal spell that you cast, rather than a summon. So you have less theory crafting to do, and less thinking in general, and just use that more easily. The best change, I think, in the whole lot has to do with the servitude, which was, it, it was one of the hardest ones to do in the Four Horsemen. So the change they've brought about is a limit to the army screens that he can summon, and it's true. And the army screens themselves have a new maximum of two IOPs each that they can summon. So if you completely ignore them for the entire fight, the maximum amount of number that you will deal with is two armies and four IOPs. That's all. That's the maximum. And Cabal now, if you gain control over the arms, it's permanent and it stays forever. You don't have to renew that. Eternal Conflict has no more two lines of modifiers when you enter the dungeon. There's one modifier across the entire area and it's the same outside and inside the dungeon. And they've thought of a new surprise interaction for the Nightmare Dofus to offset the fact that its utility was in... Uh, uh, nullifying one modifier. Now that there's only one, they've thought of something special that they've kept a surprise they didn't tell us about. 
King and Queen, they've changed some passives that they have and some spells and their durations. So King could unbewitch anyone minus 5 turns, which was <laughs> insane. Now it's minus 2 turns or 2 effects. Queen used to put you in pacifist state, she no longer do does that, she puts you in gravity state. And now the alter ego, the mobs, when you kill the normal mob and he summons the other one, the other one has less HP and deals slightly less damage. They've tried to make them m less uh, difficult when you get them out. So, don't hesitate to go to the beta tomorrow so you can give us your return, your observation about what everything we've done. It's just like the classes, really. Uh, we've made some adjustments that we will talk about just now. Don't go anywhere. Also, you need to know that... Also pay attention to the level of the dungeon and difficulty of it, but also your class. Some class or have a much easier time. Let's not say easy, but they have an easier time of dealing with some dungeons than others. So you have to take that into account as well. So not all classes will have all the common mechanics or tools to pass all dungeons easily. We can't achieve that. And also, uh, we just want... Oh, no, sorry. So not all classes have all the mechanics to do all dungeons easily. And after that, and also, where the two balances can get together is where we do changes from one side yeah, reinforce the classes from one side and nerf the mobs where possible so we can make more classes viable in more situations without releasing that crescendo where everything is perfect that we can't have. So after the PVM balancing, we want to return on some points that we wanted to try here and better your experience of the gameplay and also your interaction with the game simply by trying to remove obstacles that sometimes could be problematic if I can say it like this and also things that have been here for a very long time that we wanted to update and bring back to the current modern age <laughs> and we want to start with the point like this which is the Dotri, I don't know what the name of this egg, I've never looked into it, it's 20 power so for people who use it we wanted to give it a little we've made a little change to give it an identity so from 20 power which was negligible at that level we've changed it to 25 heals which is more specific more niche but whatever it is used it will amplify the effects and have more impact and this is what we want for the officers to be niche but at least it has an interest an identity because at that level before that 20 power it, it was not used at all as we could see let's just say it like this <laughs> so on Kralov we've added some little changes now so now we'll be able to attack the mob so instead of waiting for him to attack us now he will behave like a normal classical boss that you can just attack and start a fight with we've also added NPCs in uh, Oh, in tile, tile rooms, also to encourage uh, people to go and open it, which we thought was a bit too difficult to go and try and, yeah, because you had to go and stand on tiles and then run back to fight Krala when the timer has started. There is a NPC that will allow you to be teleported outside Kralov now. She speaks so low. So there's an NPC that will let you just teleport outside. If he is unlocked, of course, it won't work at normal time. So, and this NPC will also be able, there will new, be new NPCs that will tell you the state of other rooms, whether they're filled or not. Right. If you're in a room and there, you see there's one missing, how do you know what the state of other rooms are? So the NPC will come in useful to facilitate future and other openings. I haven't said this, I've said this last week, but I'm not saying it today. So. In the shadow server today, we have added a new fa facility for people in the shadow server to exit the dungeon without having to fight the mob and die. Also, on the capturing nets, we have made some modifications. So, we haven't changed the crafts recipe for many things, but on a couple of things, we have completely and drastically reduced the number of resources required. I'm thinking, instead of 20 Ardenites, now it's 5. Instead of 5k nuggets, now it's 1,000. It's a mega nerf of the recipe. We've also modified another recipe that will speak to you on a completely different topic which is the uh what is it called uh the lumberjack lumberjack shield which required something uh 
which require the bronze or something. No, it doesn't require anything. Maybe it's one of the early level uh, crafts if you're uh, doing your shield uh, profession. I can't, the names are escaping me right now, forgive me. Yeah, so the, uh, the alloys are completely removed for low level ones. Now, let's just go back on this really, really quickly. We've added two new runes for some items that weren't easy to mage. So, Ra Dopu and uh, Ra Repu. So, Dopu is uh, pushback damage and uh, Repu is uh, damage resistance. So, they've added plus 9 now. Yeah. And also, for people who want to level their shield profession, while talking about the modifications of the recipes, we've also added an extra new shield just to smooth and ease the progression for at level 15 because there was a hole there. So now you have more crafts overall at the beginning, every five levels, so you can speed up your progression and get there much faster. No one really cares. <laughs> Which will give between uh, 100 and 150 initiative. So we know it's not one of uh, the professions that is easy to level. So to make the early levels easier, we've made this facility for you. What else have we got? Oh, the pooch. Now, for those who want to do combos, there is an, a, a pooch NPC in every Kano Jedo right now, across the world of 12, uh, through which you will have to start the fight. So if you want just one, you will still have to interact with them twice. But if you want one, two, three, four, you can select the levels, the numbers, in order to... This is this was made in order for you to be able to test spells that require AoE, multiple targets. It was a recurrent demand. So we've added it. So it's not new levels. It's the same thing as it is right now. But we will add more numbers that you can fight in one fight. There will be the classic thing of fighting one as usual, so that won't be a problem. It will require two clicks, sadly, to in order so you speak to the NPC and pick the level for one. But at least you can have more than one now. Also, cosmetics, cosmetics who were historically very very rare items, but now that each one of us have a lot of them, and there are like ten pods on average. So what we've done is we've uniformed everything into one pods because we have so many of them. And it was starting to weigh a lot in the inventory. Even if you're completely empty, you can be full. <laughs> Why not zero? I've seen the question just now. Well, uh, essentially, we want to avoid objects that are zero pods in general. And just to end, for people who were there in the last week's life, it has been already announced, so this is not a surprise to anyone. But the guild size will be modified from 1 to 150 to 250 as a minimum. And then as an upper limit, 250 to 350. We have done this change because we've had a lot of feedback from you from last week and even before. Things to do with XP, progression in general. If some of you remember, we have had a poll about 6 to 8 weeks where we talked about the evolution that we could bring in, into guilds about their size, the XP, and all the interactions within. And it was a highly demanded thing that we want more. We want to keep XP. We want everything to be indexed on XP as it is right now, but we wanted higher numbers. So this link between XP and the guild size <laughs> is always strong. Why 250 to 350? We want to see what that yields. We want to see how you start using them. Is it going to change anything to the way you play? Are you going to have uh, the desire to want m bigger guilds in the future? It's like a first step to, say, to see what that will result in the game. And it's something that interests a large number of people. And if we do, we do see that the interest persists, we might increase it further at the way. Now, let's move on on some modifications in some quests here again. We've brought some modifications, but we want you to be careful here because we will give you the reasons why for everything to do with the progression of players. And very early on, you, fa you face these trio called the Kanya Bandits. So if you're doing your Emerald quest, in order to buy the maps, before that, you needed to do five bounties to get those little tokens called primatons, and you needed five for one. Now we've reduced it to three. It's not a big nerf. It's just on... Uh, and then we've started... Hold on. So they've changed the cost of the f individual fragments of the map so you can get the whole thing, so you can go and hunt them and then fight them. So that has been reduced from five to three. So instead of 15 overall, now you just need nine, which is much easier if you think about what you had to do and find, especially in populated servers, really, really heavily populated servers. 
The other side of the nerf is in the fight itself. While they try to conserve the difficulty of the fight, uh, they have brought about some changes that everyone at that level can benefit from. And let's have a look at them in exactitude. So the three Banias, Kania bandits fight, uh, what we have affected is the global of the three mobs HP. So if you combine them early on, it was 36,000 HP and I found it was quite high. So what we've done is the total has been reduced by 10,000. And then we have tinkered very slightly, n n nothing. We didn't change anything to the damage. The spells are still the same. It's the same exact fight. So we've reduced the total HP by 10,000 and a couple of spells we've removed some range from them, but it's very negligible. It's the HP that is the real nerf. The other one, quest fight, is called... Uh, it's called uh, the trap closes. I don't know what the exact name of it in French is, uh, in English is, but um, this quest fight, which I have never done myself, now you have the you're allowed to have a sidekick in, and we're going to know why now. So we will look at quest fights that are difficult, depending on your feedback, and if we find that it's not illogical when it comes to the lore. To be accompanied by someone, we will democratize the possibility of having a sidekick in that fight. But if it is not part of the lore and it doesn't make sense, then you won't have a sidekick, which is this example right here. So, here we have two slight small modifications. So, this was unexpected, but we've done it last minute, which is the diminution or the reduction of the HP of Nasherite from 15k to 10,000. We've not touched the functioning, the damage, nothing. There was a lot of HP to bring down for 1v1. That's a lot. And also here, I want to specify in terms of lore, it did not make sense to let you use a sidekick. So what we've opted for is to reduce the HP and let you face it one versus one. <laughs> and the last one, we've noticed in Temporis and new servers and every big event where you're starting from scratch, we've noticed that there was an anomaly where no other dungeon required a quest in order to speak to the NPC to get inside the dungeon. And unlike this one in particular, which was an anomaly in the grand scheme of things. So, the anomaly will be removed. You no longer need, the quest will stay, it will still be there, but you no longer need it as a prerequisite in order to do the dungeon, so you can just do it directly right now without having to do the quest anymore, to balance out with everything else. Exactly, that's right. That's it for the quests. We will have some others in our visor that we will study for the upcoming updates. But here again, as I've said, just to rewind a little bit, maybe three, three, six months ago, it was for the 2.7 update where I've told you guys, or we've told you if there are any quests that you want us to study, to look over something that is quite difficult that needs a rework, just tell us so we can look into them. So these quests that we've modified today here in front of you were quests that have been requested by you guys a lot over the last few months. So while we don't want to go straight into the ease of the, the, the game, make it super easy for you, we just want to make it so that you have a way of doing it and just reduce the extreme difficulty of it so you can to reduce blockage so we can allow you to carry on and and figure out what happens after you unify all the six primordial offices. So that's it for the quests. Oh, there's a question. We've noted that there's a blockage around uh, around the world quest. I've also seen Sir Momor being mentioned in the chat. So, so, um, I, I'm going to take this. She's going to take that, not, not me. I'm saying she's going to take this because she's one of the game designers and she deals with mobs, mob areas, and mob families. And I think she's the, he the head and the brain behind Sermo More. And she's saying that it is designed to be the hardest mob in the game. Although Golden Spirit made it his pet very recently, it is still meant to be one of the hardest mobs, if not the hardest according to her. She made it and she thinks it is the hardest one and it will not change anything about it. It will still be the hardest mob and you have to adapt and get up to the level. Otherwise, the whole game becomes easy if there is no one sticky point for everyone. So it has to remain the hardest uh, mob in it. So there are no, we've got no problem from our end. There's plenty of help in order for you 
to uh, use it. I don't know what she references here, but there's ways for you to bypass that and go. There's no plans to change or nerf Sermon more at all. Let's just say the compromise that we found are people who wanted to advance in the quest. There is this help. I don't know what they're referencing here. So that shares the drop or something. That doesn't prevent... Oh, that prevents the drop. Oh, is there is there a way you can defeat him and abandon or give up uh, drops or something like that? Because that seems to be what they're saying here. You can make a compromise and uh, like give up dropping things and then you can pass the quest and carry on. But you're not getting any resources. That seems to be what he's saying, but I have no idea. Ah, there's a special spell. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right. So the spell likely prevents the drop, so you get no rewards, but you can just pass it. But for those of you who are experts and very good at the game, you can still beat him. 